this thing on. Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I just had to jump on here real quick. A lot of things been going on. A lot of things in my head. So, as usual, instead of I go, you know, they just, I say, say, I just come here, dump it out here, and they save me $75. So, Pompeo was on the call with, with, um, Pumpkinhead to the Ukraine. Now, I don't know if you remembered, but on September 20th, he was asked about the call. And his, re his response, Pompeo's response was, I have not read the transcripts yet. I don't know what went on, basically, is what he said. Or he could have said, he could have told the truth and said, yes, I was on the call and there was nothing wrong in my opinion about that call. That way, he's not implicated in the call. <laughs> because he already said it. Yeah, he was there. He heard it. He didn't hear nothing that was out of the ordinary, which all of it's out of the ordinary, okay? <laughs> so he's on it. Um... Barr is going all over the country, all over the country, all over the world, trying to strong arm mother nations into this scheme that Pumpkinhead has going on. The only, the only thing that I see happy with that is for 25 years or more, general cover up, because that's what his name was today. He was known as General Cover-Up. If there was a mess that needed cleaning, you got General Cover-Up. So, William Barr going all over the place, and now he's also implemented, uh, implicated in this. And Julia, oh my God. You know, I don't know what happened to that poor geezer. Oh, I feel sorry for that old man. It's like, where are his nurses? And he needs because you don't, you don't act like that. That's not normal. One, he's a regular citizen. I don't know about you, but there's a law. I forgot the name of the law. Please look it up. But there is a law saying that common people, regular average people like you and me, are not allowed to interfere in politics with the leaders of other countries. Like, we can't. I can't go to um, Justin Trudeau and try to influence Canadian law. That's a no-no. So I forgot the name of that law, but we're not supposed to be doing it. Now, if Giuliani is a regular citizen and not hired by the White House, is not hired at all by the White House, just a regular citizen, and he's going to Italy now, we found out, Australia, we found out, even to England, to certain members of England, um, certain members in, I think, leadership positions in England. Uh, all, I mean, he's going to these places. Or was it William Barr? You know, there are so many worms coming out of this can, it ain't funny. And that's not the... Oh, my God, that's even... <laughs> Half of the things I want to talk to you about. He's throwing Pence under the bus because he made a remark. Well, you should check out some of the calls Pence been making. Are you out of your cotton picking mind? You're throwing your own running mate, your own VP, the second in command. You're throwing him under the bus? What he's doing, what what Trump is doing by turning on Pence, Trump is telling the GOP, I resign. Pence gets impeached. And Pelosi becomes president. That is what he's using as his ace in the hole. He's setting it up like, hey, you get rid of me, you got to deal with her. And she don't play around. She knows how to work this system. 
Um, I don't agree with a lot of things she does, but you have to admit, the woman does get things done. So, and that's been really interesting lately. Uh, all this work that Trump's been doing, because it's not been, it's not been, it's not been to benefit the American people. America first, Mike Patootie. I know, personally know, farmers, whether they're growing corn, whether they're growing soybeans, uh, I know a ha a pig farmer that I have to close up shop. I know another one that's barely hanging on because of all this wonderful deal that we have going on. You know, are we are we done? Are we tired of winning yet? Because I can't tell. You know, I, I can't tell at this point. Um, there's markets that are gone for good. Uh, we don't know how, the farmers don't know how they're going to get back. Now, farmers are a tough group. They do not mind going through a tough time if the outcome is beneficial. Um, they don't mind like, okay, you got to go through a winter to get to spring. And when spring gets here, everything be okay. They do not mind that. Farmers are really, really tough people. I can't live like that. Sorry. It's too hard for me. Um, it's a special breed. It is a very special breed. Hats off to them. I like to eat. <laughs> they grow the food. <laughs> can we, you know, can we make an exchange here? You want money? I want the corn. Oh, my gosh. Speaking of corn, we got some senseless corn. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. If you have a chance to get a hold of some senseless corn. The best, the best. I mean, you don't have to cook those things. They're all tender and juicy. Ooh. Oh, I should cook some corn for you. Oh, I should do like a little video where I cook the corn and I show it to you. And, ooh, never mind. Future date, I have lots of fun with corn. I put it in one of those food saver bags. I zipped it up and they're in the freezer. You know, picked up the peak of freshness and, and sitting in my deep freeze, all all vacuum sealed and nice and <laughs> anyway. Um so what was I saying? Oh yeah, the farmers. Um they you they're losing anywhere from fifty to hundred grand a year. And uh two nineteen. We're gonna find out how much they lost this year. Um, they don't, once this is all said and done, they don't know if they can recover, uh, because, the the market is being taken up, the slack is being taken up by other countries. Uh, with, we're not allowed to sell, this is weird, this is really weird, that the hog farmers cannot sell their hogs to China. But they could sell to Brazil. And Brazil is selling the pork to China. That is a weird way to go to sell some pigs. I'm sorry. If it's even true. I don't know. I, I'm like 98% sure it's true. I need to do some more snooping around. Do not take my word for this. Do your own snooping around. That's what uh, this is about. You know, we all try and figure things out because, as I say, network news is going to have their own spin on it. You know, whether it's a conservative or a liberal news network, they're going to have their own spin on it. Only you can decide what is right for you. That means you're going to have to start looking this stuff up. Independent radio. <laughs> That needs to come back real bad. We need it. Oh yeah, national. We I know we have a um, NPR, National Public Radio, uh, but that's sponsored by the federal government. 
And if they decide to choke off the funding, well, no more NPR. So it's important that I think YouTube become a new platform to spread some kind of information that's not tainted. And then we are required to go up there and either cross-check or find out more information to prove or disprove what's being said. And if anything I said is wrong or needs correcting, you don't hesitate to mark it down. Uh, you goofed up. So, it's obvious that Trump is not for America. It's obvious. So, what is he for? Why is he trying to disprove that Russia didn't have anything? And I know I'm changing the subject. I'm going... You know, why is he going, sorry, why is he trying to get what Ukraine? Why is he trying to get what all these other countries? What he's trying to do is prove that Russia didn't have nothing to do with the 216 election, that he did win at fair and square, and to take the sanctions off. Now, I told you before that Roger Stone is using the Democrats hack themselves theory in his court hearings, which no one's talking about him no more, and I wonder why, what's going on behind the scenes, and why is he trying, you know, why is Trump pursuing that? Well, if you remove the sanctions off of Russia, then you can continue doing business with and I know I'm going like a thousand different directions right now, but walk with me here. We're going to go all the way back to 250. It's just a minute. Only 12 minutes we've been here. And it's going to, I'm going to, you know, gather this up and zip it close here in a second. So 215, there was a fella in, in Russia that wanted to go up against Putin. And he was independent. He could not be pot, bought. <laughs> and he was, of course, murder. And we all know his last name was Meninsky. And at the time, all the nations were like, we're going to put the Meninsky Act in place. That's where we get that name from. And what it is, is what the Meninsky Act is, is because he murdered somebody. Because... Putin obviously murdered Meninsky. That we're not allowed to do business. Certain companies cannot do business in, in Russia. Well, what are some of the countries that were doing business in Russia at the time? Well, Putin uh, forgot the name of the the oil, the big oil company that Putin owns there. But the major oil company. Yeah, it's all about oil again. Major oil company in Russia was going to do a business partnership with Exxon Mobil. And they were going to start drilling in, in Russia's um, tundra country, the back, the less populated area. So I forgot what, not Siberia. Anyway, they were going to start drilling in Russia. The deal that was struck up was going to make $500 billion, not million, billion, a half a trillion dollars. And the money, I think, was going to be in the first couple of years. So, I mean, they're talking a lot of money really quick. And, and the more they pump the oil, the more money they would get. So... What happened is that just before that deal was signed, the Meninsky Act was put in place. That means that ExxonMobil don't get their $5 billion deal. And that means that Russia don't get to partake in that $5 billion deal. So there's a lot of money running on removing that Meninsky Act. A second sanction that was, that was put on to them recently in... Was it 216, 217? 
just recently was the interference in the election. So we put a second sanction on them. At this point, their economy is not doing very well. They must have those two sanctions removed for the economy to do good again. That's why no, Trump needs to make sure that he discredits American intelligence to remove the asterisk from the 216 election. The only way to remove that asterisk from the 216 election is to say that your own police force did not do their job properly. Because that's all the CIA, the FBI, and, and sexual, to, you know, all of the Secret Service people, the high-tech police officers. So if you're a police officer, you know a police officer, your friends with police officers, the police in your family, are you military? No? I don't know. Maybe, you know, I'm sure there's a, a intelligent branch of the military. I don't know. I never enlisted. I'm sure there is. There's got to be intelligence. Intelligence is everywhere. Anyway, moving right along. <laughs> He's saying that his own people got it wrong. And that Trump is saying that his own police force got it wrong and that only he could get to the truth. And he's going to expose the truth by saying that it was actually uh, someone in Ukraine trying to frame Russia for something they didn't do. Well, that takes the asterisk off the 16 election. Trump becomes a legitimate president. And one of the sanctions get lifted. The other sanction is going to need a little bit of finagling. I'm not quite sure yet how he plans on doing that one. And again, this is just me connecting the dots. Maybe you connect the dots differently. Let us know. Let's share. Um, so, that's what's been going on. Other than that... This is all the things I found out, all the things, of course, you guys already know. Uh, but Congress is on recess. They're going to be in recess all week. That means you have a job to do. That means I have a job to do. There is a shadow being cast on my shirt. A bunch of shadows being cast in my shirt. I hate this lighting. Yeah, what's that? See that shadow right there? What is going on? Maybe that's the grease thing. How did the grease thing get up there? Because I can't see it, but when I look into the camera, I can see it. And then when I, let's see if I can't shade the light. That's so weird. I need to change this shirt. I don't like it. And it's that one little spot. It's not here. It's not here. Hmm. So weird. Okay, enough about my shirt. I'm sorry I have a squirrel moment. Congress, reset. Our job, our job as citizens is to make our voice heard. There, there are 300, there's over 300 million of us of voting age. We all should be on the phone. We all should be sending emails. We all should be, if we can, make it to the representative office. Whether it's one of your governors. Whether it's your senator whether it's a state rep or a district rep, make it all count. Go to them all. If you think what Trump is doing is fine 
And you're okay with a Democratic president doing this? Great. If you're like, well, it's okay he does it, but if a Democratic president does it, I don't like it, you better stop this one. Because it will happen again. If we do not stop this, if we don't put our foot down, if we don't say enough, you're going to act right. Because we're not going to put up with this. Or do we want to be like any other dictatorship? Speaking of dictatorship, did you see what the heck he tweeted today? <gasps> Congratulations, China, on 70th anniversary of the People Republic. He just, he just congratulated a communistic country for being communist or communist. <laughs> he just grad congratulated a communistic country for being communist. That, I'm like, oh my god, no, no, and this is the people, you know, people are thinking, oh, he's, he, he's not, he's not a Democrat, he's not a Republican, he's not even independent, he's a greedy fool, and congratulations, we have our first mad king, it took us almost 300 years to get here. Um, but we've got our first mad king. Let's see, uh, 1776, see, 1976, 124 years, 144 years. No, it took us 242 years to get our first mad king. So I think we're doing good. Now we need to evict this mad king. And, oh, dear God. <laughs> and he's like, oh, if you if you remove me, you're going to have a second civil war. Really? Now, there are some preppers that do believe that there will be a second civil war. But those are a very, that's a very small group. Um, most people think it's going to be that the economy is going to collapse. That's what they're prepping for. And if it does collapse, uh, all you need is two things. Okay, in the event of an economic collapse, all you need is one, purifying tablets for water. Because you can live 30 days without food, but your body dies in 72 hours without water. So, purifying tablets, water. And two, alcohol. Alcohol doesn't run. And buy as much of it as you possibly can. Why alcohol? Because you could barter with it for food. Because you see, no matter how bad things get, people will always drink. When things get bad, people drink. So, you have your stash of alcohol, you take it out. You trade it for food. You bring back the food. They get drunk. The only problem is that if they find out that you don't want with the stash of alcohol, then maybe a little sticky. <laughs> but all this is fantasy. I mean, it's not going to happen. Seriously, people. You know, that's why they call it theories. Because none of it's proven. None of it. None of it's realistic. You know, and... People they take a weird idea and they just run with it. But anyway, that's what the pumpkin head is saying. That we're gonna have a second civil war. That ain't gonna happen. Um, congratulating a communistic country for being for having communism alive for seventy years. That makes a bunch of sense. And here we are, we're trying to keep democracy alive. <sighs> this will come out in the wash. You must vote. Okay, that is one thing that is vital. You must vote. Don't stop talking. Like me. <laughs> Don't stop talking. Uh, make your voices heard. Because that's the last, that's the only thing we have this hour. You know, 
I'm talking in circles now, but I really need to emphasize. Call your governors. Call your senators. If you agree what's going on, let that be known. If you don't agree what's going on, let that be known as well. But you must speak up. You must let your voice be heard. This Congress is on recess. We must reach these people now. Because I have a feeling we're not going to reach them again until after the holiday vacation. So, until then, prepare for the worst. We're all going to hope for the best. And I'm going to see you guys next time I get a juicy bite or another crazy hair that I need to talk about. Bye.